liberation greetings to all and sundry patriotic salute to the people of the southern cameroons my name is john akuro and today is february 24 it's thursday february 24 2022 my people i come today for us to share this very important message of hope i come here today for us to take a quick look at our liberation movement and understand together that where we stand today we are not in as bad a state as some in our midst are trying to make us see that where we stand today we are not in as horrible a state as to you know as we get to the point where some are even beginning to say we have lost it all my people of the southern cameroons we all are aware that in every human endeavor there are moments where everything is up and other moments where everything is down and look people i don't even think at this point in time in our liberation movement that anything is completely down at all what i must point out here is that the nine that there is some confusion some cacophony in our midst will be a big mistake truth is some of our movements some of the groups movements and organization in the southern cameroons amazonia liberation struggle are witnessing a very tough time they are witnessing tough moments but again quite others had also gone through this difficult experiences and have regrouped and are just waiting to see that the discrepancies that the other groups must have noticed among their ranks and are trying to put order will soon be over and we will come together to re-strategize together and perhaps return to experiences that had worked and so while this is going on obviously the enemy la republique du cameroon should come out there and try to take advantage and shout hure 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 we knew that we will get to this point listen today we all talk and when we're talking about our boys we make reference to the word voices in the bushes recall that that statement was made by mr paul atanganji at one of the three or so instances that the government of la republic du cameroon had virtually thought that they were crying victory that everything is over on this particular occasion atanga ponji was like saying he said the voices in the bushes had come to the realization that everything had crashed and so they were going to the various ddr ddr centers to do the the, the needful and that it was just a matter of a few more weeks and Mr. Probia will officially cry victory of La Republique du Cameroon over the wishes and aspirations of the people of the Southern Cameroon, like Ambazonia, that's aka Ambazonia, for freedom. But look, my people, shortly after that, they were all put to shame. Because again, we were traversing a moment similar to the one we are in right now. So on at least three or four occasions, they have already cried victory. But that victory never comes why because the people of the southern cameroons young and old sick and well handicapped and strong tired and energetic know that there is only one thing one that must happen as far as this movement is concerned and that that thing is victory because none of us wants to think of what can happen if god forbid that we ever failed in this movement my people of the southern cameroons even before i came for this recording i had a conversation with some of our brethren who work in the republic of cameroon's capital yawunde and they were like mr akuro we are on this call with you can we make this video i said why no problem i said no I want to ask you some questions and looking into your eyes and i was like all right i'm all right i'm i'm i'm, I'm okay right on so when they came on they say look please look into our eyes and tell us the truth be very objective are we making progress or we have failed and 
it took me a bit aback that question and the few seconds I took before coming up with an answer made them feel like we are not seeing that strength, that vigor, that energy you always see in your eyes when you come to talk to us uh, on social media. And I told them, listen, I was simply taken aback because I thought that you, like me, and like all of us involved in this movement, recognize that you also have a role to play. All of us have to work together if we must attain our objective. I see when you look at the situation on the ground, a lot of you, you sit in your offices, in Yaoundé, in Douala, you want this freedom, even more than those of us who are at the front do. Yet, you want at the same time to protect your big positions. So what do you do? You take your phone, you call your relations, you call your days in the name of I'm CPDM dad, I'm CPDM up, I need some promotion, they will take me up. Uh, cooperate with the deal, cooperate with the SDO, give information. And of course, those people, because they are counting on you as a breadwinner, they go ahead, they cooperate with the, with the enemy. And what is the net result? Sometimes, some of our heroes are brought down brutally because of those actions. And you are seated in your offices and you are expecting results. And you are looking ahead and asking yourself, when is that freedom coming? And you come and you're asking me this question. Some of them could recognize themselves in the acts, the, the really reprehensible acts that I mentioned. Their eyes fell. And I said, it is not an affair of the diaspora, not an affair only of the voices in the bushes, not an affair only of the various liberation movements, and not an affair only of those elders in those villages who have decided to work with all of us to ensure that we get freedom, that we deliver a free, strong and prosperous country to future generations of Southern Cameroonians. It is our task, all of us. And some were crying. Meeting, we go from meeting to meeting, they continue to disdain us. They continue to maltreat us. They continue to, and I say this, anytime you settle for less than you deserve, you will end up with even less than you settled for. I take us back to this because this is an example. We all discussed this with them and some of them even shed tears. I said, remember, Okalia Bilai Bernard, this month of February, like he did three years ago, threatened the chiefs in the Southwest, threatened them, and even had the gods to remind them that three years ago, I told you, you must come, stand in front, March on 11 February, they call you the night, the day of chiefs. March with the population of your village behind you. And you people joked, and I did nothing. Our back didn't bite. But this time, if you dare me, of course, we have the power to dethrone you, to take it off away from, from you. Why? Because, like this colonial administration, because of their disregard for our traditional institution, come across with that thought, with that imagination that they are the ones who pick our leaders, who pick our traditional rulers. But the truth is, our custom is rooted in the fact that the people pick their traditional rulers. And this follows a lineage, a family lineage, from which they will come one after the other. So the power of the various forms and chiefs should come from the people and not from the administration. And so when they go ahead now, categorize you, put you on a salary, because you clamor for it, put you on all of those pecuniary advantages, they transform you into an auxiliary of the local administration. And so they now tell themselves that they have the power to make and unmake you. This happens only when you decide to settle for less than you deserve and you end up with far less than you settled for, and in some cases, with even nothing more. La Republic du Cameroon is not relenting in its effort to complete its assimilation project because of people like you. That's what I told them. So my people of the Southern Cameroons, I'm saying this because I want to draw the attention of all of us 
on the territory. Those of you who are asking yourself this question, are we finished? Have we been crushed? Is it that we can't rise again or has everything ended? Ask yourself, what am I doing to ensure that this liberation movement continues to be strong? I said earlier, this is not only an affair of the various groups, movements, and organizations involved in this liberation movement. It is not only an affair of the Amber Boys. It is not only an affair of, you know, those chiefs, those brothers and sisters, those elders who have decided to stand on the right side of history. It is our affair, all of us. Everyone has to be involved. Everyone. And let me put this very clearly. When we decide to be blinded to the fact that we are dealing with a colonial administration that believes only in divide and rule, in bribery and corruption, that rather than resolve a problem, they will spend all the money they ever have to bribe their way out of it. When we have a clear understanding of this, and we still go ahead to allow ourselves to be used in some circumstances, it pains. It pains. I'm saying like this because when I look at what happened in Bambalang, when the heroes went there, I look at what happened in, uh, in Babisi, I look at what happens across the board, I look at what happens at Alabukam, look, these people don't operate in the skies. And of course, I'm saying this because when I was on a broadcast on this same platform a few days ago with comrade Yerima of the IGK and the comrade Prizo Agbo, the acting national chairman of the SCNC, the one thing we did was we were able to give ourselves a few minutes to watch Equinox, on which uh, there was a program going on there. And we decided to watch the citizens of La Republic du Cameroon trying already to take a victory lap. This is what they said, that Mr. Paul Bia is a great fellow because he decided to play what they call La Guerre de Luzu. What is La Guerre de Luzu? That's what they use. That's the war of time. The war of time that is giving itself time, telling itself that we will keep dragging, playing around, no clear cut solution, no discussion, no negotiations, no overtures anywhere, never saying whether we are into anything on the international scene or we are out of it. And with time, they will implode, that we will implode. And when we implode, we will begin to fight ourselves. And of course, all they will need to do is just come and polish up and then you know, and maintain us in slavery and servitude perpetually. So according to them, they have already attained that level. According to them, they got us now exactly where they expected to get us. So according to them, it is virtually already victory lap because we are, in, we are already engaged now in self-destruction. Of course, my people of the Southern Cameroons, we all know that this is very far, I mean extremely far, from the truth. And so, knowing that this is far from the truth should not only be comforting to us, it should give us the opportunity to do an introspection, look at ourselves, look at our hearts and minds, those of us who are allowing ourselves to be used for peanuts, those of us who are allowing ourselves to be used for 30 pieces of silver, in the various communities. No, they are placing yourself on the wrong side of history. Because even you who are doing that, La Republic du Cameroon is not going to spare you. If you doubt, look at what happened to Ibrahim, the manager and proprietor of Mawa Hotel. Of course, he was a contractor to the B. He was doing his business. He was contractor to them, meaning he was mingling with them. And if I go, by the press release published by the colonial governor of the Northern Zone, Mr. Lele Lafrique de Benchofo, he says the three were even drinking together prior to the incident where that adjudant, as a call in French or in English, where that one officer, he is a Yaoundé man, a Betty man, decided to cut them short. Because this guy could not understand, he would not swallow it, that he is drinking with people with some... Uh, slaves, giving them the privilege to sit down and drink with him, and then suddenly they even have the guts to go as far as considering themselves humans to the point where they will engage with him in an argument. Uh, in, in, a, in a situation where they will even disagree 
with him on what he says or or you know deny to do something he requests them or he asks them to do so he just made a request to his toy and he said oh yeah and they, they are across the bar what's going to happen to him nothing why nothing because of course a tongue fact will soon come out with a release to say this gentleman was just having a bad day and so you're having a bad day what do you do you can bring out your toy and hunt game of course he was just hunting game to please himself on a bad day because the lives of southern Cameroonians don't matter not even the lives of those who are collaborating with the republic of cameroon not even the lives of those who are collaborating with their bees with their with their various battalions here and there no they don't matter once you have outlived your usefulness they dump you of course we have seen them dump the phone of bambalang if that thing they call house of chiefs was any institution worth its sort what its meaning will be getting the press of la republic du cameroon talk every day about the fact that the president of such an institution has been removed for how long two months and counting nobody is saying a thing and you are still willing to go and let yourself be used hell no my people and this is what we need to recognize i've said this in other words to them coming back to it triumphantly because some will call me from a lab who come call me from and say you know uh mr kuro we used to be very strong participants all of us each one of us considered ourselves an amber boy we consider ourselves an uh, amber boys because each time we saw the talks coming and all were not were able to you know do the needful immediately and inform uh, our boys in the bushes and they know what to do but today when they come people just see them everybody just watches and are expecting but a spectacle because they are not treating us well and i'm like listen and listen to me well as early as 2018 i mbakuro on the same platform i came here and announced that there was a meeting that took place before at mr philemon young's residence for those cpd and politicians so-called elite of the northern zone and at the residence of former minister tang imbianyo clarkson for those of the southern zone but at the residence of minister tang imbianyo clarkson at a level in yaoundi when they finished i received the minutes of that meeting which were simply laying out the game plan of putting in place of getting bandits hardened thieves from across the entire territory of la republic du cameroon anyhow and then making sure they get those that can speak even pidgin english join them with some of the recastrum but all of them created their own camps and these people will be there what will be their role to bring horrible exactions to the public to the local people to make them mad and so that eventually they will turn against the voices in the core belief that all of this is done by the same voices who are supposed to be standing for them and so what would that do turn them against everyone including even the genuine voices and eight la republic du cameroon to finish to do what they are doing on us now but because sometimes we listen here it goes out the other way we forget and when these things begin to happen we don't take note that we had been told about this thing this is the more reason my people why some of us including me had been or have been very obsessed about the need for our voices in the bushes to build some kind of synergy to unite so they will know who is who very easily so they can while working together in unison calling each other and collaborating and exchanging they will be able to unearth to unmask all of this planted apparatchiks here and there with the sole intention of murdering the water sorrows and of making us begin to hate our own very liberation movement begin to hate our own very aspirations begin to hate our own very quest for freedom because we want to bring us to that point where we start saying it seems we're even better to stay on with la republic du cameroon than what we are living through or witnessing now
my people. Anytime you pick your phone to call the enemy against your kind, know that you are playing exactly the card they expect you to play. When it comes to your turn, they won't even think twice. They may not even recognize you. Of course, the gentleman, that betty guy, who was simply having his bad day, and opened fire on Ibrahim and, uh, and, and, and his friend, he simply knew nothing happened to him. Because in the words of Okalia Bilai Bernard, we are roaches. We are dogs. Huh? Yeah. We are rats. In the words of Jacques Z. So we are not human. Consequent on that, anything they, uh, they do, they will go with it. And when they do it, if it's not as flagrant as this one, they know that there's some atong fact, some, some uh, kennel atong fact in Yaoundé who will come out there and, you know, look for a reason to give it. They did that to a gentleman with whom they often drank to below Foncha. And when they finished, they carried sticks and planted on him and said he was amber. They have done that over and over and over and nothing has happened to them. Yet, we don't seem to get it. Now, my people, today, as I'm talking, is the day of the internment of Barista Kemende. Now, Barista Kemende is today being lowered and the same authorities mm -hmm. that did everything to make sure they cut his life short because of the things he was saying and doing because of his thought pattern today are pretending that they want to give him a befitting bear until they were even shutting down some areas of the city of amanda after they have staged something to make it seem an open and closed case that those who cut short the life of Barista Kemende were already also rewarded and sent to hell. We are yet to hear a single word from those they claimed did not die and were taken alive. That thing, whether they say about one or two. Listen, my people, let us face facts and be very clear about this. The Bokom feeling station that these people claim. That the guys who took away Barista Kemende and his car and finished him and dumped him and went with his car came back with his very car to rob at that station. The entire area is heavily protected, heavily militarized. How could they imagine that they would drive that car, that same car? They didn't change the color, they didn't change anything. All they did was simply remove the number plate. They'll be able to get there and operate the way they, they operated and go scot free. If you don't understand the Republic of Cameroon, something is wrong with you. Ever since the demise of Barista Kemende, that government made no statement until this day when they made this setup. These are other young men that they definitely set up, did everything, gave them back this vehicle. Take it. How did these guys pass with this vehicle all the control points leading to this filling station? They of course, set them up, put them there, go there and do this thing. Unknowingly, unsuspectingly, they come in and they believe they are operating with their accomplices, the talks of Mr. Pobia, and of course, they will come in there to the scene, waste them, and then give the impression that these were the ambassadors who came. Finally, who of those whose lives was cut short, was actually identified as belonging to any of the, camp, the Amber camps, to any of, of the Amber groups, not one. Why have people not asked themselves this question? Has anybody asked themselves the, the, the question as to why is it that these particular Amber boys have not been identified as belonging to any of the known Amber camps in the city of Bamenda? So they just fell, these are Ambers who just fell from the skies, just fell like that. Boop, boop, boop. And then they were taken off, and none of them has been recognized, identified, or, or anything. And no group has identified any of them as belonging to their group. Of course, they just wanted to create a situation of an open and closed case. But we are not fooled. Because, as I said earlier, the results of the autopsy make clear Barista Kemenda was not shot, he was tapped. And this should be clear in everybody's mind. 
If you continue to give your cooperation to La Republic du Cameroon, know that you are creating a situation you yourself cannot stand. Now, while all this was going on, I was looking at what is operating within La Republic du Cameroon. And of course, there is massive confusion in the place there. So a headline like this one, a headline like this one should be that kind of headline that sends shock waves through your spines. That you should look at, understand, and tell yourself that not even you who is standing and calling yourself CPDM or whatever have there and calling them, we, uh, chef, 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 we, ja, ja, vu. You can't even speak the French, you'll be breaking it, ja, vu. The, so you see, uh, elle, elle a est passé comme ça. And all of those things, then you go and collect 10,000. The next day, you sit down and be drinking with them, and this is how it's going to end for you. And you know, nothing will happen to any of them, shy of some light, some very slight regrets. That is the most, my people, that can happen. So let us always be clear whenever we find ourselves locked in situations like this that it is always better to stand with your people whatever the circumstances la republic du cameroon itself is in some kind of turmoil tomorrow you will not even be able to find a foothold there yourself home is definitely home if they can do this to their people look at this gentleman a teacher with this paper in front of him saying he had worked for 10 good years. I mean 10 good years with no pay. And somebody asked the question, how about 10 years? What was he counting on? What was he planning to do? Working for 10 years with no pay to the government of La Republic du Cameroon. That is the kind of country we are running away from. Yet that is the kind of country some of you are working so hard that is the kind of country some in our midst are working so hard to drag us into. A country where teachers get up and say, we are disgruntled, we are angry, our working situations are so bad, we don't get good pay, we don't have, a, you know, when I talk here about the financial woes of La Republic du Cameroon, people think it's a lie. The teachers are saying, for at least four years today, they have not had the normal increments that should come every two years pass on their on, on, on their pay packages. They have not had family allowance treated onto their pay packages. Those who are appointed don't have the necessary allowance imputed on their pay packages. Nothing, nothing is happening. Why? Because there is no money. Because they're about to crash. And all what, they, all what they need to do now is to play over our intelligence. Give us the impression that they are as strong as ever. And what does that do? It rattles some in our, in, in, in our midst. You begin to disbelieve in our ability to attain our objective. And at the end of the day, you begin to cooperate with them. Because you say, better perhaps we we'll go back. Back to slavery. The children of Israel thought so too. But going back wasn't the best thing to do. And they forged on. We have to forge on as a people, my people of the Southern Cameroons. We have to forge on. The Malays on the other side is strong. I bet you very, very, very strong. And while it is going on, some interesting thing is happening. And why is that interesting thing happening? Because everyone is on the wait. You know, in La Republic du Cameroon, life gravitates around appointments. Right now, since after the, the, the AFCON, the news of ministerial shakeup has been sounding louder and louder and louder. And every sector of the country, life is actually coming to a standstill as everyone battles to make sure that they have a place in that new government. That is why you must have heard that some people from southern cameroons people they call northwest that they are presidents the association of presidents of cpdm section presidents came together when i met uh, the prime minister of la republic du cameroon john gute the marionette prime minister who cannot even be allowed to go represent the country when the president is absent 
at a summit of heads of state of the EU and the and the, the African Union in France. The power it is a secretary general at the presidency who normally is not is not part of the larger government. He is in the cabinet of the president of the republic, not part of the government. Oh, he is the one who went, not the marionette prime minister who has been shelved. And this are the things that make me constantly repeat to our people that whenever you settle for less than you deserve, you end up with less than you settled for. I will repeat this over and over until it begins to sink into our fabrics. That this is a mantra we must hold close to our minds because there is nothing as true as it. So, it came to pass that they went, met uh, Chief John Gute and told him, listen, this is our motion to Mr. Paul Bia. We want Mr. Paul Bia to be our presidential candidate at the 2025 presidential election. Hey, did you hear that? Clean the wax off your ears. So I, so I take this over. I am saying, these people who say they are presidents of CPDM sections in the place they call Northwest, went to the Prime Minister of La Republic de Cameroon, whom they claim is head of government, Chief John Gute, and told him, gave him a memo to give, to transmit to Mr. Paul Bia to say, they want him to be their candidate at the presidential election of 2025. Paul Bia purportedly celebrated his 89th birthday on the 13th of February. That is only 11 days ago. They say 89th because that is the official age. Of course, we all know it definitely may be more. And so in 2025, Mr. Pobia will be 92. 92. If anyone saw the images we saw, at the Olympic Stadium on the day of the final, or throughout the Afghans, the two moments he went to the field, everyone saw vegetable. Until the economist, Diodene Esomba of the Republic of Cameroon, is today being grilled because he made a statement of fact that the image that he saw of Paul Bia was a disgrace to the Republic of Cameroon. Yet, this is a person, this guys came, put themselves together and said they want him to be their candidate at the 2025 presidential election. How hilarious. Of course, that is how La Republic du Cameroon operates. Mm -hmm. And that is the monarchical setup we are struggling to depart from. Just take a look at this. It tells you. They say nation in suspense as Bia delays actions on hot files. Guardian Post is simply holding itself from saying action on ministerial shakeup. That country breeds, eats, and only turns around ministerial movements, around cabinet shakeups, and things like that. So, while La Republic du Cameroon is caught up in this kind of situation, my people, it is time for us to hold ourselves together wherever we are. Hold our hands together and play our roles. Don't transform yourself into an informant to the colonial administration against your own people in exchange of some peanuts. Anytime you want to do this, ask yourself what happened to Judah Iscariot. He himself couldn't stand it. What he saw being unleashed on our Lord Jesus Christ because of his action of sin, because of his action of betrayal. He couldn't stand it. He couldn't. Do you think you can stand it? If you can, okay, go ahead. Don't take the excuse that no, they did this to me, they did that to my family member, they did this to my uncle, they did this to my auntie, because I had explained here amply just how our mates, our ranks, were infiltrated. And by doing these actions, those who came in just for it, succeeded at least 
in derailing some of our genuine amber voices in the bushes. And so they too could find themselves doing some of these kind of things. But that is not an excuse for us to dump what we hold so dear to our hearts. So while the Republic of Cameroon sits down to talk about la guerre de l'usure, we should be reasoning seriously in the various in our various localities. This message is, is this message is particularly addressed to the people in the various uh, uh, LGAs, counties, villages, and all of the southern Cameroons. Those of you who are allowing yourself to be used, desist. Turn back. It's not late. Be back on the right side of history. Stand with your people. Nothing should shaken your faith, your belief, and your trust in this liberation movement. Whatever the circumstances, we will put our acts together and we will be able to overcome. This is the message I intended to share with all and sundry today. To God be the glory.